Diane Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law here on Think Tech Hawaii. We air every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30, and we talk about issues that are relevant to, uh, to your everyday life and uh, larger issues as well. Today, I'm very excited to have Young He Overly uh, on the show. Welcome, Young He. Is, oh, Thank you. you. Have, is, that, is that Young Key, or is, would you like me to call you Young? Or you? Young Key is fine. Okay, Thank great. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having me here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Um, we met sort of through the Women's March on Washington, right. tangentially through Sherry, Sherry Campagna. Right. And so um, maybe you want to talk a little bit about your um, your experience with uh, the women's rights movement and wh wh where you see it's coming from and going to, something in, like, along those lines. Sure. Um, so uh, I, I will start with my experience at Women's March. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, because that would be great. Because she made it to the Women's March, unlike <laughs> me. She actually went to Washington. <laughs> yes. So I was one of the, you know, there were over a million people mm -hmm. uh, in D.C. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a, an experience that I am going to be remembering. It's hugely, um, it was hugely important. Uh, you know, when, when they announced it, when there were uh, Facebook posts mm -hmm. about it, back in November, uh, instinctively, I felt that I need to go. I had absolutely no idea uh, what it was going to turn out to be. Uh, but there, you know, there I was with uh, friends and other fellow activists, and they were all, we were expecting, what, 200, 250,000 right. We would have been people? happy, I think, if it was 200,000. Right. Because yeah. it was such a short time period. Right. And it was all grassroots and it got organized very quickly and there were a lot of uh, chaos and debate in the planning right. cycle right uh, so we didn't know that there were going to be so many people but there. it went off without it went off so perfectly it, and it went off, uh, across the world people joined too which was I, I found very moving, frankly, yes, that yes. people in France and people in Germany and people in England it marched in solidarity right. with us. That was just terrific. Right, and and even you know I think there were over a hundred countries that was involved, and. Uh, it gave a meaning to global sisterhood, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. You know, Young, I want to ask you, because everyone always asks me, people say this, what are we marching for? So what are we marching for? I, I have an answer, but I want to hear your sure. answer. Sure. My answer is uh, instinctively when it was just getting formulated as an idea on, on Facebook, I felt that I need to be part of this because we need to be visible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. The rhetorics uh, from uh, President Trump during his campaign about women were so repulsive that I felt that I need to be there as a woman to be visible uh, to say we're not going back. Right, exactly. Uh, that I we, agree. we are not going back. I agree. There's uh, a whole host of rights that I'm just not ready to give up. Right, right. And, and to be joined by millions of people, men and women, there are many, many men, many men. My there. husband went here to Honolulu. Right. Yeah. And, and young and old, mm -hmm. uh, multi, multi generations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do that peacefully was I think the fact that we did it peacefully was most amazing. I think that's, that. I agree. I because agree. it shows that we could do it. We could resist. We could uh, get our voices heard in millions and do it peacefully. Right, right. And uh, that, um, and what you pointed out, the fact that it happened around the world. Right. I thought that was, it's spontaneously. Yes. It's not like, you know, this was a big two-year event that people were planning and, and recruiting for. It was a spontaneous eruption right, right. because I think people were so stunned uh, about the election and about the kinds of things Donald Trump says that they just, as you said, it resonated with people. Right. So it gave life to, to grassroots movement, right. right? So it wasn't just about women's rights. Right. Uh, it gave life to grassroots movement. Right. It gave life to global movement. Right. It gave it, it gave life to what is possible right. over social media. Right. right. So there are so many aspects 
of the march that I'm sure there will be case studies and case studies. I of, think so. <laughs> about well, you know, I think the march affected um, this temporary restraining order in Washington. I mean, there's such a clear voice for certain causes, you know, right. and they, it's clear people are not going to stand for certain, you know, behaviors. We're, we're not going backward. We're not, we're not going to prevent somebody from entering the country just because of what religion they might practice. We're, we're just not, we're just not giving in. And I, it's, it, you can't ignore that. If you're an intelligent person, right. you know, like you're a judge, you can't ignore that there's so many people that just it's averse to their ethical code, you know? Right. Actually, I think what this, what's going on uh, in this country and perhaps in the world is us reflecting on what rights are we now willing to give up, right? right. And, and what are we marching for? Right. Uh, and answering it at a personal level, and, and how, how do, I, do I fit into the bigger movement? I think many of us are asking that question. Right, me, I am, but I'm certainly asking that right. question. What, what can I do, what am I gonna do, how am I gonna participate going forward? Right, and what was so exciting uh, was that there were so many young people involved in this. So many, it was great. Yeah, it was the, great. The, the main organizers are young right. themselves, right. right? The younger than right. me, for sure. Yeah, oh. me too. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it's also giving the young generation uh, energy to fight for the kind of world they want to live in. Right. So so that was very empowering for me to see uh, so many young people there. Uh, I and my friends also took nine college students with us. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, from the, from the students who, from North Carolina. Oh, that's terrific. To the march. That must have been um, fantastic. And it was just great to be with them. And they have left also saying, uh, I'm, I'm gonna quote one of them. Uh, he said um, that this is a life-changing experience for me. Good. And he thanked us uh, for bringing him. Good. He thanked us for Good. asking him. Well, it really him. is, you know, when you're in your formative years and you, you become part of a group and your heart and your spirit are so into the message and you realize that like everybody's for one and uh, you know you're part of a large dynamic organism it's very moving it's very mm -hmm, influential mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i mean right right i mean it certainly happened to me in the 60s and 70s when i marched for uh, various things against the war women's rights you know, anti-apartheid right. you know it's all it's all inspiring to, it is inspiring. to participate and and like you said uh, we we are one of the organisms of a bigger Right. Bigger word, and right. and uh, it gives a purpose, right? Right. At personal level. Right. So, so you know, and, and I, I'm obviously um, I didn't get to participate in 1960s movement. Good, you're nice and young. <laughs> now I get to do it. Yeah. Right? Well, it, it really feels very similar. I mean, where people just aren't going to take it. They want, they're want. they busting out of their everyday humdrum lives to sit, take a, stand, a political stance. The, after the 60s, everybody just sort of accepted things. Reagan, they accepted things as they went on. But people are no longer willing to sit back and just go to their job and accept things and accept things that are coming down, you know, by executive order or whatever. They, they, they're they not. They, they're standing up. They're going to the airport. They're right, going to Washington. Right, right, you know I mean? right. It's just not going to it's just not gonna fly. Right, right. And, and all the uh, executive orders that has come out, uh, the gag orders, mm -hmm. uh, whether we are talking about to EPA or global gag rule that mm -hmm. he reinstated, um, that I think it's gonna get us to more to resist. I think to so. To push back. I think that's right. Because one of the fundamental uh, rights we have as American uh, is our right of speech. That's right. Freedom That's of speech. Right. And the very fact that, that okay, I, I, let me step back. A, as an executive, uh, President Trump does have right to put gag order on specific things. Right. Because there's a reason right, for, for it. Reason. If, the, other, if it's a compelling reason, yeah. Other presidents have used that, right? right? Uh, but this feels like, because the first gag that came out was around how many people were at inauguration, right? right? He gagged the National Park from expressing 
what they observed. Right. 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 And he had National Park to retract what they have tweet, tweeted about. Right. So from the very beginning, from almost day one of his presidency, he put a gag order. Oh, yeah. And he it was, was for the personal benefit. Right. So this time, it doesn't feel like he's doing it uh, for true business purpose because he has to, uh, he has some project or some bill. I think that, it feels inauthentic. I think you're correct. right. Correct. And he feels like he's doing it for selfish reasons. Right. And I think, I think Americans are smart. I think we sense it. And that's why we're going to push back even more. I think so. So, I, but I think, I hope, you see, you know, Jay asks, like, what, what, how did you get him to change, or how are you going to get him to move? You know, it, it's pressure over time. It's not an expl you know, pe peaceful resistance is not an explosive no. thing. No. It's pressure over time. It's marching in, day in, year in year out, sometimes month in month out. But it's it's constant pressure. And what 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 makes it so successful is the idea that the authorities are just beside themselves because they don't know how to make it stop. They want right. to make it stop, and right. they have no idea how to make it stop. It just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Right, right. You know. And, and uh, you, you use the word uh, peaceful movement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. Any peaceful movement. By the way, peaceful movements are far more successful than oh, violent yeah. ones. Right. Oh, yeah. So this is the only way to do it. Uh, agreed. Completely agreed. And I feel like Women's March was beginning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it does take a long time. It does, because people have to know that you mean it and know that you're going to stick to your gun. You know, there's going to be a woman's strike uh, on um, February 17th. There's going to be a general woman's strike. So that should be interesting to see if people actually take off of work and don't mm -hmm, go into work. Mm -hmm. And there, there's going to be an LGBTQ march during uh, Gay Pride mm -hmm. uh, uh, week in, 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 uh, in Washington. So. This is like, these are the things, the upcoming things, that people are like, oh, they're not going to wait away. They're not going to give Correct. in. We're Correct. not going to be able to scare them or shut them up, which Correct. is what they want to do. They want, they, Trump wants to silence the press. He thinks the press should just shut up. Like, that's like Isn't a that what Steve Bannon said? <laughs> right. Press, just listen, shut up and listen. Right, exactly. Um, it's, that's an unconstitutional statement. I mean, there's provisions for freedom of the press in the Constitution. It's a very significant right we have to a free press. And it's also a fabric of who we are as America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you take something so precious like that, so, by the way, something we take for granted, Right, because uh, I took it for granted that that I, I had freedom of speech. Right before the election, I uh, I think I did. Right. And to fear that that's being threatened, right? I mean, this is what makes America truly great. That's true. And and for and I say that as an immigrant. That, which is the most powerful, uh, a testament to uh, the American idea, the American project. But we're going to take a quick break, and we'll go back, when we come back in just about a minute, we'll continue our discussion about right. our place in society. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward, and the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper to bumper traffic. And this show is dedicated to talking to f with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon and let's move Hawaii forward. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on ThinkTech's show. Sorry. Hi, I'm Marianne Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law. We're with Young Overly today, talking about peaceful resistance and the women's movement. And you know, and and you, Young, just before the break, made a 
a wonderful testament to the the power of the idea of the United States of America because she's an immigrant. And right. and and tell me what that means for somebody that's an immigrant. Tell me, I mean, because that's something I learned in school and I, I something I truly believe in, I feel patriotic, but I think you must experience it much in a much greater way. Sure, right. So I immigrated to the United States uh, in 1974 from South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my life uh, in South Korea, President Park was the dictator. Okay. He was a military general uh, who took over the government uh, and ruled with iron fist. Right. Uh, and slowly we watched uh, freedom being taken away, including freedom of press right. that we just talked about. And one of my earliest memories I have is my dad donating money to, we weren't well to do, mm -hmm. but he still somehow managed to find money to donate to a newspaper. The very last newspaper they resisted President Park oh, before wow. it was shut down. That's right? such a heroic thing to do. So the newspaper pretty much operated on individual donations for years. And my dad was one of the donors. So message I got from my dad through that act, although he did not say it, anything explicitly, was that we have responsibility as individual citizens to stand for what we believe, we do. even if it means just donating money right. to support what he believes you, in. You do what you can. You know, sometimes people, People don't know what they can do, and they feel like, well, I can't go to Washington, so I can't do anything. But that's right. not true. Any little thing you can do, any little light you can shine on the problem is is a help. I right. mean, I think it's to each person according to how they, what they can do. I, I right. you know, you know. And, and that's how I translated that what he, his action. And the other thing he did voice was why it was important to him right. that he got information, right. that balanced information. Right. Not propaganda. Right. And I think he said what he said because he's originally from North Korea. Ah, uh, okay. So he's really. He familiar. escaped North Korea during Korean War. Mm -hmm. uh, so he understands the value of freedom of information mm -hmm. and speech. Mm -hmm. And what was happening to the press was so against his belief. Right what he came to South Korea for, right? right? So that's what I watched. So coming to US in the middle of all that uh, in 1974 and realizing that there wasn't that level of oppression here. right? And then I started to take it for granted. Well, we shouldn't because, you know, we're starting to see again institutions being shut down. Right. Um, oppression, oppression of speech. Uh, you know, I, I, we originally uh, talked about, and this is something that, you know, this, this, this incident has made me nuts, that uh, Elizabeth Warren was silenced in the Senate for reading a letter by Coretta Scott King. Now, I don't know if people realize, but Coretta Scott King stood beside Martin Luther King in very nearly everything he did. You right. can, if you look at pictures of her, she's there. Right. So it's 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 particularly it's a, a particular kind of insult to want to silence this kind of voice, you know. Right. And it, it just was. It was also, you know, I found it, talk about inauthentic, I found it a little bit inauthentic. I thought that uh, the, the Mitch McConnell was posturing for the Senate, because really what she was saying was not really, didn't really insult Sessions very much, mm -hmm. didn't impugn his reputation, but th they're just getting puffed up, they, that they, they won't tolerate anything. They, they're showing they're not going to tolerate any speech anymore that's averse to their interests, you know? So. Well, the, uh, it was, uh, I think, Senator Udo who ended up finish, finishing reading um, Coretta Scott King's letter oh, when really? it was his turn. Oh, right? okay. In, uh, in honor of uh, Mrs. King, but also in honor of Elizabeth Warren, right. in support of her. Right. But the very fact that uh, as I'm watching, uh, I'm, rather, as I'm reading about what happened, I can't help thinking Tom versus Elizabeth. Why is it that Elizabeth was shut down? 
but Tom was. Well, I I'll tell you why, and it's the same reason, and people are going to disagree with me, why Betsy DeVos came so close to not being not, not being appointed. And I disagree with her. I do heartily disagree with her. But you know what? It's easier to shoot down women. Correct. It's easier to Correct. stop women. And, and, and people, I, I said to people, well, you'll see, if they're, if they're successful, they'll be successful uh, with DeVos because people are... They understand the woman thwarted. Like they, they think women should t step down, should step aside, should listen to a male authority figure right. who's saying be quiet. Right, right. It feels, it feels normal to people. It feels comfortable to right. them. Right. You know Culturally what I mean? accepting. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Perhaps e even without realizing that that's what. Oh we yeah. Are doing. No. I'm, and these. No. I know absolutely not realizing because you know in the case of Devas, obviously it was liberals. But I think people really need to examine what they think is normal, what is acceptable, because, you know, I've talked to so many women, and lots of women my age, a little younger, you know, I've never been discriminated against, but, you know, you have to think, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, have you ever been looked over because the boss, like, liked someone else because the boss liked basketball, and so that person did, too? That's discrimination. I mean, we, we really... We haven't really dug deeply enough into the psychology. Hillary Clinton, I believe, lost because of discrimination. Into how deep, deep, deep rooted uh, uh, this fear of powerful women is. It's, I mean, mm -hmm, it's hugely mm -hmm, deep rooted. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like us. People don't like us. <laughs> we should be quiet. People think. Yeah, and and you know, uh, the argument is, oh, she was warned. And she ignored it and continued on. Right. Guess what? A uh, hundred years ago, women were warned as well. Right. But without them, women wouldn't have rights to vote. Right. 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 So, right. so at times, uh, at times we have to reflect on ourselves and examine our own cultural bias. On things like that, but, Agreed. but you know, reading it, that was the first thing that popped into my mind is, why was Elizabeth shut down when Tom wasn't? It, How come he got to finish reading? But you it? know, when you ask those questions, I ask those questions every day, almost really, mm -hmm, literally, mm -hmm. and to uh, typically to men in power, and you know, when you ask those questions, people respond by saying. You're hyper focused on this issue, or this this is just a coincidence that it was Elizabeth Warren. But you know how many coincidences can there be? You know how much repeated behavior do you have to witness in order to realize, hey, this is a deep rooted uh, bias against women. Right. It is, it is a deep rooted behavior. Right. And and perspective right. we have that on, if left unchallenged and without the reflection, uh, we're not going to make any progress. I agree. Right? I agree. So, so that's, um, um, you know, I guess one way, other way to look at it is uh, now uh, we kind of look like an idiot. I think he does. And I think, you know, he blew a little tiny molehill into a huge mountain. Correct. You know? And even, even Fox News. I, I watch Fox News once in a while to just to oh, make I sure do. That, I watch it. that I have balanced the view, right? Exactly. You want and to see the other even side. Even Fox News felt that, that uh, McConnell made a huge mistake right. by doing this. Right. So I guess if you and I look for something good out of it, uh, perhaps this will get... Um, Meet to do some self-reflection. I hope so. I mean, I hope people people ask the question, why, why her? Why why was she chosen what, to be silenced? Right, you know, right. You know, it, 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 I, to me, the answer always is is very clear. But you know, you know, you're talking about giving up rights and us thinking about what rights we're going to give up. You know, part of the problem is, you know, somebody is going to have to give up rights, and like the dominant male, you know, the male white men who've had extra rights really for the history of this country are going to actually have to give up some of their privileged rights, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, so that we can all, in order for us all to be able to sh and share in those and to participate in those. And whenever I see somebody like Mitch McConnell, I always think, well, you know, that's your last holding on. You're like, you, you need to hold on to that. You can't, you just can't let that go. You're just not going to let the, you know, the fact that you're in charge, you're in charge of women, you're not, you're not going to let it go. And, and what, what, um, what, 
what Mitch may not be willing to let go is the old idea of masculinity. Oh, absolutely. Right? And, and I, I just finished um, my master's degree just last year. Oh. And my thesis was on engaging men and boys to uh, prevent violence against women. Okay. And in that research, um, I started thinking that this was an uh, essential part of cultural change we need, that we need to do this to, to uh, stop uh, gender-based violence, right? I think you're right. And what I have learned through my research is, and, and, and I, I think I am right on that assertion, but what I have also learned is that men benefit. By, by reflecting on themselves and, and re-looking at masculinity as defined right. and challenging it and redefining what it means to be a man. Well, that, then we have to and, and then, spread that message around. And this because, is why you know, I'm hoping that uh, Senator uh, McConley will do some self-reflection but as an outcome of this. I hope so. I hope so. I hope he realizes that he really made a misstep and alienated uh, people just just by his choice of, uh, you know, who his choice, you know. So, but, you know, it's interesting. The classical um, cultural uh, bias or, or, or ma masculine way of being is uh, a violence toward, it's, it's not even a violence just toward women, it's a violence, it's an aggression toward the world. This is how men were, were taught to Correct. be men. Correct. Uh, through aggression. And, you know? and, and it, is, it is unnatural for many men. But I think it is. Right? Yes. To, to, to play the role right. of mas right. you know, men as defined by a Western right. definition of masculinity. Right. So, so again, um, you know, that's, I couldn't help thinking through that today as I was reading, saying, would it this, would, will the fact that this has become bigger than it needs to be right. for uh, Senator McConnell, would that force him to think about himself. I hope so. Uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> you know, I, I also know, and we're running out of time here, that it was a, a letter by a woman, woman that was also silenced. So it's I know. it's so complicated. It's so multi-layered. Yes. How deep how deep yes. it goes. Yes. And nobody wants to look. People are always like, oh, that's just a coincidence, or that they would have done it with anyone. But you know, yet she, there's a woman reading a letter by a woman who's silenced by you know the head of the other party. So and the very very fact that Senator is from the South. Yes. Right. Right. And very fact that there are. Um, uh, photos of him behind with the uh, Confederate flag being can't, posted everywhere. He can't change his Come stripes. on, uh, it's uh, people are connecting the dots. Yes, yes, I we are not that. the only people who are connecting the Let's dots. Let's hope the Senate connects the dots, although I don't think they will. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It for was so wonderful.